At this point, we need to determine which structure is the most likely Lewis structure for the bicarbonate ion, HCO3-. For this, we use formal charge. Recall that the formula used to calculate the formal charge on an atom is Fc equals the number of valence electrons the atom has minus the sum of the non-bonding electrons around the atom and the number of bonds attached to the atom. We'll start with the hydrogen atom here. Hydrogen has one valence electron. There are no non-bonding electrons around it and it has one bond attached to it. So the formal charge on hydrogen is 1 minus 1 which equals 0 which we'll note above the H in the structure. Now we'll calculate the formal charge on this oxygen atom. Oxygen has six valence electrons. You can see the atom has two non-bonding electrons by counting the dots. And this oxygen atom has three bonds. So its formal charge is six minus two plus three, or six minus five, which equals positive one. A carbon atom has four valence electrons, and the atom here has no non-bonding electrons around it, and a total of four bonds attached to it. So its formal charge is four minus four, which is equal to zero. You can see that this oxygen atom has six valence electrons, six non-bonding electrons, as shown by the dots, and one bond. So its formal charge is six minus seven, which is equal to negative one. This oxygen atom here is the same as the previous one. It has six valence electrons, six non-bonding electrons, and one bond attached to it. So its formal charge is also six minus seven, which is negative one. So if we add up all the formal charges on the atoms in this ion, we get zero plus one plus zero plus negative one plus negative one, which gives us a total of negative one and the net ionic charge on the ion is also negative one. So the formal charges add up to the net charge on the ion, which should always happen. It would be best for you to pause the video now and determine the formal charges on all the atoms in structure two on your own. Then you can hit play again and check your answers. After calculating the formal charges, you can see that all of the atoms have a zero formal charge except the oxygen on the bottom that has the three lone pairs around it. Its formal charge is negative one. Negative one is also the net charge in the ion, so this works out. At this point, it would be good practice for you to stop the video and determine the formal charges on the atoms in structure three on your own. Then click play to proceed. You can see that in structure three, the only atom with a formal charge that is not zero is the oxygen on the right side. Again, this is the oxygen atom with the three lone pairs around it. In choosing the most reasonable Lewis structure for the bicarbonate ion, HCO3-, we choose the one in which the combination of formal charges is closest to zero. In structure one, there is a plus one and two minus ones. In structure two, there are four zeros and one minus one. And also in structure three, there are four zeros and one minus one. We see that the combination of formal charges is closer to zero in structures two and three than it is in structure one. So both structures two and three qualify as the best Lewis structures. So these are the most reasonable Lewis structures for the bicarbonate ion HCO3 minus. Since we're just focusing on these two structures now, we'll call the one on the left structure one and the one on the right structure two. Now looking at structure one on the left, if one of the lone pairs from the bottom oxygen atom left the atom and formed another bond with the carbon atom, the carbon atom would temporarily have five bonds. So this would cause the electrons from one of the double bonds to leave the carbon atom and form another lone pair on the oxygen atom to the right, like this, leaving a single bond between the carbon and the oxygen on the right and giving this oxygen three lone pairs. You can see now that we have transformed structure one so it's identical to structure two. We did this simply by moving electron pairs around without changing the positions of any atoms. This transformation can be represented like this. Here electron pairs are moving in structure one 
and it's being transformed into structure 2. Now let's focus on structure 2. If one of the lone pairs from the oxygen atom on the right left that oxygen atom and formed another bond with the carbon atom, it would result in the carbon atom temporarily having five bonds. It would force the electrons from one of these double bonds to move onto the bottom oxygen atom, like this, and form another lone pair. Now there's only a single bond between the carbon and the bottom oxygen atom. You can see that structure 2 has been transformed into structure 1 just by moving electrons without changing the positions of the atoms. This transformation can be represented like this. We can summarize the fact that structure 1 can be transformed to structure 2 or structure 2 can be transformed into structure 1 by placing a double-sided arrow between them like this. Structures that have the same arrangement of atoms but differ only in the distribution of electron pairs are called resonance structures. Even though we imagine these two resonance structures flipping back and forth from one to another, it's important to know that this doesn't really happen. It turns out that the actual structure of this ion is actually a blend of these two structures. For example, the bond between the carbon and the oxygen on the right is neither a double bond nor a single bond, but something halfway between the two. Similarly, the bond between the carbon and the oxygen on the bottom is neither a single bond nor a double bond, but something halfway between those two. Sometimes the structure is represented as a blend of the two resonance structures, like this. The bonds are shown as a solid line and a dashed line, which represents something intermediate between single and double bonds. Notice that this is no longer a Lewis structure as the lone pairs have been removed. In the actual ion, these two bonds are found to be identical to each other, with half single bond character and half double bond character. So it's important to remember that when you derive two or more resonance Lewis structures for a molecular ion, the actual species is a blend of the different resonance structures.